The thing that Minority Mindset just shared on his Twitter feed, talk about a conversation from Fed President Christopher Waller, talk about what's going on in Austin real estate market, Goldman Sachs' newest call on a recession. But folks, I want to start with a conversation I had over the weekend. I was communicating with someone who lost a home to the foreclosure crisis of 2008, 9, 10. This individual has been a renter since he lost his home to uh, foreclosure. And they are angry, upset about what is going on in the housing market today. They now are saying things like the data is manipulated. How can we have inventory so low, uh, transactions so low, interest rates so high, and not having a housing crash? It is, it is tough. You have to feel for someone who, um, who lost a home through a foreclosure, who had to go through that with their family, with their children. So it's... Um, it's a hard conversation. So this is what I shared with them. One, I think we need to have an honest opinion about what happened in the foreclosure crisis. How did that come to be? Now, in this case, this individual had a career in the mortgage business. The mortgage business, if you're not aware, was a uh, fraught with fraud and um, a lot of unscrupulous actors. There was a lot of money made uh, during that crisis and undoubtedly this individual likely made a lot of money, right? Go ahead and watch the money, the, watch the movie, The Big Short, one sec. Hey, Sonny, how are you? Go ahead and watch the movie, The Big Short, and you will see the mortgage brokers acting a fool. So their income was highly indexed to housing. They also likely signed up for these uh, teaser loan products that you see referenced in the big short. They were paying high commissions, right? They were, uh, they were toxic from the day they were created. The story was, as the big short shared, you'll just refi uh, when the time comes, and obviously that didn't work. So what I had to have, I had to have a heart to heart with this individual and just say, you know what? I think we need to own some of that. You made a choice. You picked a lending product where the payment would adjust significantly in two years. You knew that that payment was unaffordable, but you believed you could just refi out. That was the story going on. So again, the lending product, the market at the time, it was, it was unhealthy. So again, I think I think there's a lot of people that blame the system, that blame this. They don't take personal accountability for their choices last time. But now let's talk about the housing market today, because I think it is really odd that people are still struggling with the fact that the Fed broke the housing market. The Fed broke the housing market. The Fed kept rates too low for too long. It was a mistake. Let me be very clear. It was a mistake. It was wrong. It was an error in judgment. In fact, I'm now on record saying that I think we are going to pay the price for that error for a decade. It doesn't bring me joy to say that. But to look at the data and now run with conspiracy theories that the data aggregators are lying is reaching and unhealthy. If you don't want to buy in this market because you're scared, fine. It doesn't matter. But what is happening today with a broken housing market we've talked about for a year, and I'm sorry you don't understand, or you just are blind to the fact. One, the move up buyer is out of the market for all intents and purposes. It makes no financial sense to get one extra bedroom to have double the mortgage payment. Again, a move up buyer is important because they are two transactions. But more importantly, and I want to make this very clear, but more importantly, when you lose the move up buyer, you lose the inventory for first time home buyers. And when you lose the inventory for first time home buyers, 
you get a very bifurcated market. I would once again ask you to look up what Lance Lambert posted a couple weeks ago on Twitter. He and I spoke about in his playlist, Lance Lambert, the housing market is broken. I would ask you to look at San Jose, California for a great example. In San Jose, California, the luxury market is down nearly 10%. Folks, across the country, luxury is in trouble. It is an optional purchase. That is the key. Luxury is an optional purchase. If you happen to be lucky enough to be shopping for a luxury home, you couldn't have better timing. Unfortunately, most people are shopping for entry-level homes. And unfortunately, it is tough out there because again, there's no inventory. So back to San Jose, California. San Jose, California is down 10% luxury. What is it doing at entry level? Record high. You may not like it. You may think it's not fair. Sorry, life's not fair. This is the reality of most markets across the country. So again, I'm sorry you you have PTSD. I'm sorry you lost your home to foreclosure last time. But remember, take some personal ownership. The loan structure that you signed was toxic the day you bought it. You happen to be in an industry that had significant ups that I'm sure you enjoyed and then a tremendous down. The market we are in today is very different. You should be able to look up unless you don't trust Black Knight and see that 90% of loans are below 6% or something like that. The effective interest rate of all housing is 3.6%. They're fine, but they're not selling. And again, I don't know, you know, it was a hard conversation. You feel for people who lost their homes to foreclosure, who had to move and had to, um, to rent. That had to be hard. But that doesn't disqualify personal ownership. And it doesn't give you the right to um, blame others. Take some personal responsibility. Alrighty, folks, that was a hard conversation to have. But let's get on to some more data. Let's go to uh, let's go to Minority Mindset. Minority Mindset on Twitter. Uh, I saw it this morning. He said, "When bad things happen, assets go on sale." Folks. This is exactly the mindset we need to have, right? Remember Warren Buffett, when the tide goes out, we see who's swimming naked. Don't look at the naked people. Look for the gold and the diamonds and the platinum on the ground. I am, you should. Remember, it's not all about price. Sometimes it's about terms. Recessions, bad times, illiquid billionaires, highly leveraged, the financial engineers, all are going to lose, and they should. That's what happens in the financial system. I agree with minority mindset. Get ready. Please get ready. I am not saying buy. I'm saying get ready and look for great deals. Number two, Fed Governor Christopher Waller is out this morning saying, quote, that was a hell of good week for data. It's going to allow the central bank some time to see the lag effects. Folks, I think they are uh, making it very clear that a September pause is on the table. But also, let's remember, I think they're going to pause for 18 months. So what does that mean? The Fed cannot and will not signal they are done. They will continue to make statements like data dependent and we keep optionality for the future and all of those things. They're done. I think, in, I think CPI headline is sub 3% sometime this year because housing is rolling over and it starts next week. I think it starts on the 12th. I forget when the CPI is reported, but that is coming. How about Austin? If you want to look at a broken housing market that is really feeling it, uh, go ahead and check out Austin, Texas. I don't know if you know this, but Austin, Texas is within 11 active listings of a three-year high. Austin, Texas is actually, I want to make sure I get this right, 
up 9% from 2019. What is going on in Austin, Texas? Folks, if you're in Austin, Texas, I want to hear from you. I know there's been a lot of population growth. I know there's been a lot of building. Is it, what, why, why are active listings? Are iBuyers exiting the market? Is there an Airbnb bust? Is it boomers selling out? What is going on in Austin? If you are an Austin realtor or broker and you have real data, I would love to talk to you about Austin, Texas because it is acting very different than most markets. For example, Austin, Texas is up 9% from 2019. Waco, Texas, up 17% from 2019. Not only to be outdone by Lubbock, Texas, up 22%. So as we all know, during the, um, you know, the last couple of years, Texas has seen a lot of net migration. Is this just population numbers skewing it? Or is there a lot of people boomeranging they went to Texas and now they're leaving. Is it high property taxes? I don't know. Uh, let's talk about it. But again, Texas clearly has active inventory growing. But did you know Lebanon, New Hampshire, down 78%. Hartford, Connecticut, down 79%. Folks, think about this. Let's just pretend the number was 100 for easy math. There was 100 active listings in Hartford, Connecticut in 2019. There's 21 today. Wow. Only to be outdone by Peoria, Illinois, down 80%. Folks, just like Austin, Texas, if you happen to be a real estate investor or uh, agent or broker in Peoria, Peoria, Illinois, I would love to hear from you. What the heck is going on? How can your active listings be down 80%? from 2019. Next up and finally, let's talk about Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is at it again. They have once again re adjusted their rece recession odds. Six months ago, it was 30%. Three months ago, it was 25. Now, 15%. Yes, folks, 15% chance of a recession. And September rate hike is off the table according to Goldman Sachs. And then finally, let's talk about Redfin. Redfin put out a piece of data saying that home prices, or I'm sorry, home payments, payments are at a record high of $2,649. Payments are up 17.8% from last year. Does this mean we need a housing crash? No, it means transactions fall. Folks, the housing market is based on payments. And if payments are at record high, we should expect less transactions. Oh, by the way, everybody in the home today is sitting pretty because they have an effective interest rate of 3.6%. It is fixed and their housing cost or shelter cost is fixed. It's these net new transactions. And thus, I believe we are going sub 4 million. When the August numbers are reported in about two and a half weeks, I think existing home sales will be sub 4 million. There is a cost, there is a price to be paid for seven and a half percent mortgages. And unfortunately, in the broken housing market, it is not crashing prices. It is crashing transactions. Folks, take care of yourself, have an amazing day. Like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to check out my two other growing channels, The Daily Financial News and The Best of ORAT. These are channels that are gonna take data from this main channel, repurpose one video a day. This channel gets six or seven, and I'm having a lot of fun. And if you are part of the boot camp, you should have gotten a Zoom invite. We are talking 6 p.m. Thursday for about one hour. I wanna get our, you know, get settled get ready to rock and roll. If you can't make it, don't worry. It will be recorded and I will post it on the Teachable platform so you could watch it at your heart's content. Have a wonderful day. Like, subscribe, comment. Be awesome. Take care. Bye-bye.